scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. My passion for God and my sincere desire to see Him glorified. You've heard me say it and God knows my heart. I love God more than ministry. I love God more than money. I love God more than anointing. I don't use him for these things. Never have and never will. I'd rather give up ministry a thousand times to remain in his presence and to remain in love with him. I even love him more than the quest for his presence. This is where I believe many people miss it. Because primarily our motives are corrupted. God for us means many things. For other people, he's just a solution like a charm, like a genie that you use and invoke his name, invoke his blood, invoke his fire, invoke whatever to get results. You're not going to really host extraordinary results that way. Are we together? A genuine encounter with Jesus that births the fear of God in you, that births love for God and love for humanity it's not enough to love God you must love the people he has sent to you and you must love the body I love the body of Christ with all my heart I am part of it I'm proud to be part of it I love the body of Christ I may not agree with every perspective in the body of Christ I may not hold as part of my conviction every opinion and perspective but it's, it's too little a reason to not love the body of Christ I love the body of Christ regardless of man of God regardless of denomination regardless of exploits or setbacks I genuinely love the body of Christ now let me tell you when you get to this spiritual state when you can assume this posture you are ready to host the grace for transgenerational relevance not outside of this condition the Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man that which God has in store, not for them that pray, not for them that seek him, for them that love him. When a man truly falls in love with God and is addicted with his presence, his life, everything about God becomes an obsession to you. His house, his life, his word, everything, your whole life is poured as a drink offering. Then you are ready to rise above any challenge. I'm telling you, challenges will come upon you. You will rise and shake them off as if they do not exist. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Are we together? So we discussed that. And I said how that many believers, they may be born again, but they've not had a genuine encounter with Jesus. An encounter that is greater than any circumstance. You know, when people doubt God and turn and insult God to his face, over situations and circumstances Lord I prayed for, for tea you didn't give me tea, I prayed for bread you didn't give me bread, I prayed for CGPA, I prayed for a job you are not faithful and um, you know God if you don't do this I will backslide it's because you've not had an encounter the remedy for that kind of talk is just an encounter it's not counseling, the remedy is an encounter, there is a way that a man encounters God that you owe him your allegiance regardless of what happens around your life. Are we together? It's very important. 
whether you bless me or not i'm in love with you to a point of addiction whether ministry rises or not it has no it it, it it does not contribute in any way to influencing my love and my appetite for you please i pray that as you listen to me this will become a reality that this will not just become a talk from a preacher you see when you are pretending certain things in the kingdom it will only take time time does not change anything but time is a revealer of motives time will reveal whether you genuinely love god or not the second thing we said that is the key and i'll pick up from here now that's where we left up last week is the power of mental transformation the second key that is required to rise above and beyond the challenges in life listen please to rise above the limitations that plague mankind to rise to a life that is of notable transgenerational relevance a degree of kingdom impact that outlives you if christ tarries the power of mental transformation listen i said it it never it never tires me to communicate to god's people the extent to which the quality of their paradigm can determine the course of their future in ministry in life in business in marriage in any area at all the quality of your mindset are we together and i told us last week that we are conditioned in two ways basically the first condition is a genetic programming we are programmed genetically by reason of the transfer of traits i'm being very slow and being very detailed because i want us to get this the second which is the most disastrous or most um, notable of the transformations is environmental programming say environmental programming we are programmed environmentally which can be engineered by culture past experiences our levels of exposure the environment that we grew up in chances are that if you never saw a successful person growing up you do not have a reference you see belief is based on a reference are we together you cannot believe vaguely there must be a reference preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built this is why the disciples were very powerful jesus was a reference and that's why every leader that must teach people part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same it is easy for people to believe when there is a measure when a when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of god upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing i am teaching now i am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things i'm sharing now were the things that i shared a number of years passed but their impact um, were not as impactful as it is now of course I've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication a, communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened 
people are only obsessed with results it is god that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience are we blessed tonight the power of mental transformation the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says receiving the end of your faith we discussed that last week it said even the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit. I began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years, the power of paradigms. Look at me. Listen, let me tell you something. As great as a man is, he can limit God. Remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place, Psalm 78 verse 41. They limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. They said, can God make a table in the wilderness? They limited the Holy One. It was not their fault. It was their conditioning. After 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance, it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt God. Something about our culture, as good as it is, something about our cultural experiences have informed us has created an understanding in our minds i was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things he was along the side of um, the line of marriage and all of that and i was sharing with him uh, you know generally speaking you know we we got into different discussions and i was telling him that if i were to cop to counsel an intending couple I'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions. The first thing I want to examine is their passion for God. And then the next thing I want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding. What is your viewpoint about God? What is your viewpoint about money? What is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose? What is your viewpoint about your personal life? What is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and home? This does not just apply to the line of marriage. It applies to everything. There is something culture taught us about God. There is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about God. Their experiences were their sermons. They preached it with confidence. We embraced it with sincerity. And we are victims of their limitations. Are we together? There's something that our past experiences have done. I always give an example if it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message are we together because there is no template that represents favor in his life most of our families live from hand to mouth so every time we talk about prosperity our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them we have associated prosperity with negativism with fraud, with, with unseriousness, with fetish, demonic activities, especially when young people are prosperous. And you know, let me tell you something. After listening to a very powerful message, after listening to a powerful series, Financial Dominion, The Wealthy Place, The Economic System of the Kingdom, you will think that your paradigm will change at once. No, it took a long time for it to be built. It will take a repetition, repetition of new ideas, are the keys to changing our paradigms you have to you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again that's why the bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the next word hearing there is understanding hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of god hallelujah proverbs tells us for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart it didn't say so he will become it didn't say so he is becoming for as he thinketh in his heart so is he 
for as he think it in his heart it equates my physical reality to my life this is the difference hear me brothers and sisters between a ceo who is living in an office with an ac having secretaries and pas and sitting down and you think he's just writing and then a megad a, 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 a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration most times a security person is angry how can i be working so hard and i'm receiving ten thousand per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving five hundred thousand and my answer to that frustration is what switch them switch them for only two weeks take the megad don't change anything don't give him any orientation keep him in that office and take the ceo to the gate let me tell you what will happen after two weeks people will stop going to the office the ceo will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there are we together his hospitality his open-heartedness his calmness his people skills and all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there let's go to our man in the office i know what he will be doing drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are you are certainly not going to be here for a long time then he looks for what to steal he signs documents anyhow and then he crosses his leg watching tv changing channels enjoying the ac probably texting all the people and say my life has changed the place will be dirty i assure you he will not empty the waste bin he doesn't have that frame of excellence his paradigm of excellence is not that way he will destroy everything he will misplace documents scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately at the end of it he will be frustrated he will steal something sizable and run away that will be the end of that man another popular example you wore a shirt for one year it was always clean and iron nobody knew it was one years old and you gave somebody and his mindset rubbed off on the shirt in one month he turned a white shirt to brown have you seen people like that yeah listen our physical environment is but a looking glass you never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things it's not even by trying to dress well and no 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 it's a culture you've got to change your mind so the bible says in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus i was not born this way i re-engineered myself using the word of god and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are we together you must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life hallelujah paradigms there are people who will use a water system toilet a very clean toilet and finish i mean in a house not even the one in the hostels a clean toilet they enter the bathroom they saw everything clean they use it and leave it there and just go out smiling and they tell you i've finished they took their mindsets there their mindsets took them there are we together yeah there is something about excellence as obvious as it should be you must be trained to discern it don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed it is so that's the reason why the higher you rise the more you must have a greater capacity for patience because when your mindset changes you wonder sometimes i look at people and i am amazed the way they think certain things that should be so obvious you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions the power of paradigms are we together a man can come to you someone can come to a jimmy for instance and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how god has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering you have access to a great man what is there to say sir 
if you were to be at my age, what will you advise me to do? Or if you will be at my level in life, what two things do you think I should focus on now? We never ask questions. Have you seen people who have access to great men? One guy came to my hotel room in Abuja and he came just because of his friend. He wouldn't even come. He came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? There is a logic to people's frustration. You can trace it and see why they are where they are. Paradigms. Mindsets. Why should I dress well? Um, do, am I rich? Paradigm. Are we together? There are people praying endlessly to have pot belly. Just like that. Why? Because based on certain cultural experiences. Now listen, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm teaching here. There are cultures, am I right? That train people. The moment they see you with some level of weight, they say, ah, this is, things are working. But you know that absolutely nothing is working. Paradigms. That's what informs people to live fake lives. There are people who, if God blesses with 50,000 now, their mindset tells them, look, you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong. So they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes, let me tell you something. When I meet people who are greater than me, I have no pressure to prove any point because I know I'm stupid when I'm doing it. But then you see a lot of people with their little understanding, small results here and there, they come and they never learn. They are trying to impress you. Hey, Jimmy, I'm a business person. I just read Robert Kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance. That act alone is a revelation of where you are. Because great people are silent. Let her works speak for her at the gates. And so when we're done, let me finish up my story. They were about to go. I was greeting them, you know. And then the gentleman just came to me and said, Sir, please, just one favor. I said, what is it? He said, let me snap with you. And I looked at him. I said, this, this boy is not wise. Honestly speaking. That's why we must crave for wisdom. I said, this, this guy is not smart one bit. I said, all right, that's okay. He snapped with me. About three hours later, my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on Facebook that me and my very good friend, Apostle Joshua Selman. Now, hold on. I'm not insulting him. He may even be listening now. Listen. Listen. Do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around Look, let me tell you. If a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan, and you wear suit and stand close to him, something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place. If Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him, and they say colleagues in ministry, even me I know. God knows, the devil knows that we are not colleagues. They will snap me standing where you watch the picture, I will be kneeling down. Because the reality of my heart will reflect itself. Amen. Say paradigms. Say mindsets. Say programmings. Something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations. Culture. Experiences. Are we together? I don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing I'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details and um, I trust that God will change our mindsets now let me tell you something there is nothing God can do about your life as powerful as he is if you are not willing to change your mindset Lord I want you I want you to bless me and God says okay can you allow me work on you there's nothing wrong with me God says alright there is a mindset that is responsible for poverty there is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. There are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. 
Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years, maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago, I would have been 100 times without exaggerating higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute, lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, there is something in my mind that is responsible for my limitations. Please take it out of me. Go ahead and pray. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. There's something. I grew up in Nigeria and there is a way Nigerians are lovely people. They are great people. But there is a faulty paradigm. Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. I declare my disloyalty to every paradigm. No matter how long I have held it. A paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person. A paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Alright, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key number three. To rising above recession. Key number three. To rising above any kind of limitation. Is the discovery and the development of your value and your abilities. I'm going to dwell here. There is a lot to talk about here. The discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance, please listen to me, a man's relevance is not based on chance. It's not based on some kind of sentiments. The disparity, the, the stratification between the wealthy, between the great, the anointed, the influential, among many other reasons, primarily is their value. Write this down, please. Your value is a representation of your worth. Your value is a representation of your worth. W-O-R-D. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. This is the index for measuring a man's value. So when we say a person is valuable, a preacher is valuable, a businessman is valuable, a leader is valuable, please listen to me. We're not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish. A measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide on the strength of the problems that you solve and on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform put it in another way if you are not providing any kind of solution if you are not solving any kind of problem and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people you are not valuable and hear me please relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system. We've said it again and again. Let me just do a recap on it. Or touch a bit into that. Right? You can get the message the wealthy place. Write this down. This is the fundamental law that governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom. Our rewards in life. And that reward can be financial, the sense of security, the sense of honor that we receive, whatever it is. Our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one, 
the demand or the need for what we do number one the demand or the need for what we do number two our ability to do what we do number three the difficulty in replacing us my relevance in life my relevance as a man of God is not just tied to God the demand for what I do my ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me let me tell you when you understand this you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now this is why pastors are wealthy listen pastors think they are wealthy I was teaching the school of ministry uh, school of ministry students and I said many men of God think they are rich because they are serving God that's not the reason why people are wealthy it's based on a law if I am blessed today among other reasons is based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me which is on the strength of what I do my proficiency in doing it are we together a man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick a man of God is rich because he's providing solutions his solution may be supernatural in origin the solution may be spiritual when you connect people to Jesus Christ you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men and the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value whether given for free or sold a reward must come to you a reward must come to you the laws are inflexible you cannot change them so for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival to bring miracle signs and wonders I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors let me tell you why that is powerful much more than business it is an intrinsic value value that is not dependent on any external environment and value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors so one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value don't say i am poor don't say i am mediocre what value are you bringing to the table of destiny call this stage the table of greatness there are enough seats for everyone but your pass is your value your pass is your value not just any value values that are needed and useful values that are needed and useful applicable to the predicament of your generation God is helping someone are we together what have you brought to the table of greatness that author you, you know listen listen do you know why they call people thieves and frown because you see rewards but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward that's why we hate arm robbers an arm robber brings a gun and says give me your one million and you tell him what is the value he said i have no value but i have a gun to threaten you so it is bad but that same one million you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it listen you don't sit down and wish to rise you grow in value to the level that matches what you desire so Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value someone can bless him with 10 million whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him what is the difference their value your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability
there are two dimensions to value i want to talk a bit about value number one is intrinsic value write it down intrinsic or inherent value value that came with you it was a gift from god to you part of your packaging and part of your wiring it can be improved upon hallelujah are we blessed this night i really want to challenge you look at me please please do not trivialize what i'm teaching you god is not a herbalist this is the key that lifts men above recession i was talking to one of our ladies she works in the bank and um, i was talking to her this morning and i told her i said how is it going in the bank and she said kai things are, are really bad for many people though but she said there are some i said that's right in my mind i said that's me you are now talking about me he said there are some their lives have increased and multiplied do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective there was famine in samaria minus the king minus the king number two minus elijah all the people elijah never said please even elijah begged for bread elijah did not beg for bread in samaria he came gallantly and saw people eating their children the other one said we ate my child yesterday we said let's boil this other child and the woman refused are we together prophet we boiled my child yesterday when I was eating my child, we ate together. Now is the turn to eat her own child and they refused. And the prophet said no. Let me tell you something. Your value vetoes your education. Your value vetoes your cultural background. Your value vetoes any limitation. I don't care what it is. Will you open up the gates? open up the doors will you open up the gates open up the doors listen believe me brothers and sisters when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things Sunday Adelaja 96% of his membership in a communist nation right ukraine a communist nation 96 percent of its members are white in a communist nation value the key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people this is what a lot of pastors go through this is what a lot of business people go through this is what a lot of individuals go through they think the key is resentment and anger and hatred no the key is to pay the price of discovery and developing your value a student comes in backtrack five years six years a naive young person probably in his teenage comes into an institution i want to study medicine not even having an idea of what he wants to do are we together or the implication and he goes through five six probably seven years of rigorous training they never change his skin they never change his clothes they only change his mind and after six seven years a panel of people will test him and accredits the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor and they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization value i am surprised when many people say why am i poor what kind of question is that why am i poor why am i suffering the recession and I, I mean no disrespect as I communicate this. Everyone is left to his lot. If Bill Gates, for instance, let me use finances. If Bill Gates comes here right now and says everybody 
Go and hold someone whose life you changed. If you can hold five people, you receive a million dollars. Some of us will roam to everybody. You touch somebody, you say, I will slap you. You've not added any value to my life. Why, why do you want to hold me? I have never been blessed, not by your wisdom, not by your spiritual life, not by your anointing, not by your academics. Nothing about you has changed me. But there are others, there will not be enough room. Everybody says, you changed me. You changed me. You blessed me. You advised me. My business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me. That sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life. The power of your secret place changed my life. You preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me. Problem solved. Solutions provided. Lives transformed. And there is a reward waiting for you. I guarantee you. No witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has walked upon his value. What is my value? What is my gift? What is that ability that can bail me out? Let me tell you something. And I'm, I'm a Nigerian. I want to say something that is very serious right now. I'm a Nigerian. I love Nigeria. I love everyone in this country. We are brothers and sisters. Are we together? But listen. Do you know why? I want to be sincere with you. Do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now? I know many people think he's Buhari. Others think he's Jonathan. Other people think he's PDP, APC. I'm not a politician. Are you together? Let me tell you. Something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people we only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years the same way to happen to your destiny i mean a, a department they give everybody food free of charge so i think let me tell you you do not generalize impact and success you must be sure what parts you are contributing Otherwise, you'll be ashamed with time. We are worship team. We are all great. But in all sincerity, what is your unique contribution? One day you hold the mic alone. And on that day, we know that you are the one limiting the worship team. On that day, we know, ah, so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you. We have been managing it, but right now, we are a group of intelligent lecturers. We are all intelligent people. The day you have to do a presentation as a person. Life must single you out one day to defend yourself. I belong to an anointed ministry. Great and wonderful. We are shaking the world. I agree with you. A day will come you will stand before the sick. Apostle, I'm not there. Ejimi, I'm not there. My head of department, prayer, ushery, decoration, they are all not there. On that day, that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise. Life will challenge you. Life will test it. And until you are able to prove it, the disciples kept enjoying corporate success. Until one day, when Jesus climbed up the Mount of Transfiguration, they were happy. They brought an epileptic person. They said, don't worry about Jesus. We are here. Just keep him down. They struggled. They were embarrassed. Nothing happened. Let me tell you. Do you know what causes jealousy? The ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about. You've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons. No, this person cannot be sick. Then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for, before the opening prayer, he's healed. And then the person testifies exactly as it happened. You know how people testify. They will say it the way it happened. May God make you to, be, to develop an appetite to be valuable. An appetite to be valuable. Let me tell you how you know you are really valuable. When no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver, you are exceptionally valuable. Listen, listen. I can't remember how much this is, how much they bought it. But let's assume this is 300,000. Just an assumption, right? Assume that this pulpit is 300,000. 
when they call the price what do you do you look at it the material the quality and he says okay if they look at this and say bring 10 million you look at it and say no that's the same way they rate you so you say 20,000 they say you are telling the truth then you say 100,000 they say for where is money free like that but there are others they don't even say anything their value says any amount priceless 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 and so someone brings 10 million and says sir please don't be offended it's a privilege for me to do this may you be such a person may you be such a person hallelujah Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have in fact to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again the Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said no 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 no. we are going to come in now he's not only ministering in Lagos he's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade again say value when Benihin enters a, a nation, no matter who is invited, uh, inviting him, he is received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's strolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My, my desire is that under God myself and this great ministry will be so valuable this place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now the protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around why because every week groups are coming individuals are coming from all over the nation it's called value if we remain at this level we will never rise but if we keep rising by the spirit of God and true determination a time will come somebody will come from another state another nation and say it's a privilege finally are you that valuable are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life are you so valuable i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart then you will know why certain the money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud wanting something for nothing is wickedness now let me tell you how many of us approach it oh god will you keep looking at me like this and god says i've been looking i said laws and i put preachers he said let them come back to to life remember the prayer of 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 who the rich man let them come back to life he said no they have the prophets and the law if they will not listen to them even if somebody comes back to the dead they will not listen just like there are people God has anointed but many people will not listen why should you fail in life your background who told you it's because of your background there are people today with no arms but they are valuable there are people with no legs they are valuable there are people with no eyes they are valuable there are people who cannot speak they are valuable we don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God he's really valuable He's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. 
Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me if, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It earned you the right here. When we stop, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so, while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in a filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the filling station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? Why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Hapa. Is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me, then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people. Offended. My friend, we used to eat together. But you were not doing the same thing. Now the person has risen. You call the person and a secretary picks. Hello, sir, so so and so so organization. Please let me talk to him, Jare. Tell him my name is uh, Ajayi. You don't know me again. And you are shouting and raking and getting angry. Value. May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only... There are people... That's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potential is not at work. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you called into? I'm called into the music ministry. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and he said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen. Can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. In, the mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. God, you have given me grace for music and worship. Who can invite me 
because of the grace I carry. Don't flatter yourself in mediocrity. Challenge yourself based on a reference that is global. Don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes, you sing off key, and someone says, Kai. You know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing, but vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the, your competitors just by looking at them. You see the flawlessness of their preparation. And just the preliminary screening, you are back home. And then you say, no, in Nigeria, this is because this person is Yoruba. That's why they didn't take me. No, sir, you are not good. Be honest with yourself. It's, I'm not saying you cannot be good. Listen, value is only valuable when competence is added to it. Value only becomes valuable when competence is added to it. Yesterday I was studying on diamonds. I just decided to study on diamonds. I didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds. Different kinds. And I was seeing the diamonds and the, the recall in finding them. And I mean their structure, the, the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable. Are you competent? Are you competent? Seest thou a man diligent in his ministry, diligent in his business? It's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane, it will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining, and you just take a flight, and within one minute, you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. I will be a wicked preacher. I will be a wicked man of God to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what I'm doing with my life. And by the grace of God and in all sincerity, that's what has brought me where I am. And I told you, where I am now is my preparation of yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal to you what I'm doing today. Value always precedes manifestation. So when you see a man manifest, that's not his true state. It is his passive state based on your seeing him now. In business, in ministry, there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works. And they may never find out. There are many people who don't know how this thing works. I'm sorry to say, but look at Zari as a case study. Almost every business in Zaria, almost, not all, but almost every business in Zaria is tainted by mediocrity, smallness, average. There's, there's nothing world class. There's, there's no touch of excellence in it. We are limited because of our culture. I have my small shop. This is nice. We never learn. Someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you. Then you make it again. No, you must learn from other people's mistakes. Are we together? I have hardly seen things in this city, and I say it with all humility, that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute. From our hotels, are we together? To our restaurant services, in fact, from the most part, they are terrible. Yet there are many of us seated here. If I ask you now, what did you say? I've been cooking. You are the only one who has not eaten. The fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. A means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, 
if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Competence. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now, you have prepared yourself. There are too many, you know the problem with many of us? Look at me. This, 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 this pressure for recognition. I want to know that I'm a CEO. I said it, I think it was to the school of ministry students. People write books after 10, 20 years of a track record. But in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book is an authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life. You are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow. Years ago, a few, well, they are not really my friends, but they are ministers too. They met me and said, Apostle, at your level, there are some bishops who are not like you. You should be on TV and radio. I said, I hear. So that I will get to a point where I'm limited and I have to beg for partners. Isaiah 77, give me Isaiah 61, give me 61 naira or 610 naira. I don't want to do all those things. I don't want to stand on air playing gimmicks. I want a situation where the day Koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problem solved lives transform and you enter your Sabbath at once please hear me Koinonia and all those following not everybody is a victim of this recession I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way the finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year, more than any year put together. Now, please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm boasting. I'm only challenging you. In a time we call recession. Say something I do not know. Say it again. Something I do not know may be responsible for my limitation one of my pastor friends started bus transport bus services and he called me he said apostle i can't believe this you've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church just at one junction where everybody will wait after one month we looked at when they sent the report i said nobody a trek from wherever you are coming and we've done this without fail not for Friday's program. Anytime this ministry is holding any program, once it is night, we're a responsible ministry. At any time, whether it was planned or not. Brothers and sisters, there is something that is being done. This is where I'm taking you to. It was not like that. Our first crusade, they were almost locking me because of 150,000. Aaron. Whereas the money that is circulating now was still there. I have learned through pain, I have learned through mistakes. I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free. I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. You are not preparing your way. There can't be greatness. Don't be too quick to show forth. Prepare. 
everybody say prepare prophesy to yourself say myself prepare myself be competent myself work on yourself Don't make noise. Don't take this colleague mentality moving around. I used to know you, Pastor Femi. We are fellow pastors. Colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people. Oh, we were classmates. The same class. The same university. The same this. The, we are both doctors. We are both professors. No, no, no. The Bible says one star different from another in glory. Say in the name of Jesus. There is a, an ability. Say there is a gift. Within me. That is greater than Zaria. Greater than Nigeria. There is an intrinsic value. Within me. That can bless me. That can bless the kingdom. And I will search it out. Hallelujah. There is an intrinsic value. Now, intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent. The only thing you do is to develop it is there. I'll give you an example. Intellectual property is an intrinsic value. You don't refrigerate it. You don't warm it. You don't keep it in a safe, in a bank. It's there, it's there. You've trained your mind, intelligence, intellectual property is there. He's playing this keyboard now. This is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopying machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things the machine needs light are we together the greatest way to rise is to work first on your intrinsic value you have the grace to sing work on it you are an entrepreneur work on it don't say i'm a ceo ceo that is not producing results is a sign to sit down say i'm a potential ceo there are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in, in, in Ghana, Benin Republic, Port Harcourt, Lagos, and so on and so forth. And you look at the person who is talking. You ask him, sir, what do you know about real estate? He said, look, that's not the most important thing. Me, I'm telling you, my father did it. He gave you, and he has one plot of land somewhere. You see, we, we mock ourselves. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging without content is like a balloon. You hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is, is a metal. You will just touch it and it will burst. I sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry. Yet, they want me to buy their album. No. I told you last week, there are many people who claim they can cook. They have restaurants. Are we together? And you start bullying people and say, ah, shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant i saw you the other day ella you should come to my restaurant to eat are we not fellow koinonia people she wants to be healthy she wants to be healthy and as far as it is concerned you have not worked on yourself one of our school of ministry ladies uh, um, she made one beautiful work just a beautiful artwork the students saw it i mean she's here very fantastic artwork and when i saw it i said my goodness this is excellent i told her improve yourself and monetize your value monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent then you place a price on it are we together now i want everybody to write write three things you know god has put in you that must be developed and deployed please write it down young old write it down type it right do whatever it is please write it down don't flatter yourself don't write what you don't have just patiently think and you'll find your own don't just write because your neighbor wrote something 
Value. Value. Aaron is here. He handles most of the logistics of the you know people around different kinds of logistics. Why? Because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself. The other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his uh, just a little like dining or thereabout and his little office that he has and I saw him writing goals. I saw targets. I saw plans of action. I said this is excellent. This person is going to go far. Please do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward. That you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you. It must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity, communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing. Hallelujah. I met a pastor and the pastor told me something. He said, man of God, if you, he's quite an elderly man. He said, if you continue going the way you are going, you're going to have such an exceptional ministry. I said, thank you, sir. I intend to. And that's why I seek people like you to add to my life. I am not ashamed of my ignorance. I'm not ashamed of my limitations and the things that I do not know. There are many things I do not know. I know some, but there are many others. If I knew them, I would not be where I am. And I humble myself to seek for knowledge. I see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others. Are we together? You call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person, when can I come and meet you? Or when can you come and meet me? And the person says, why? They say, I have a business proposal. I want us to rob minds together. Sit down with your broke, bad attitude and you will never rise. Never, never rise. There's so many people who do that. Why am I challenging you? I want you to rise beyond the recession. You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially, societally, then you can say based on the GDP of a nation, based on certain indices, a nation, when it does not meet certain things, then there is a recession. There is inflation or whatever it is. but not an individual. There has been no time in the Bible where famine affected everybody. There, were, there, there has always been exemption. Those who offer value are the ones who are exempted. Please hear me. What gives you the justification that between today, Friday, and next Friday, something would have entered your hand? Or I'm not necessarily just saying money. Somebody would have acknowledged the fact that God is using you to bless him. My life has been transformed. What value do you have? You see, the anointing does two things. It activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there. It activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift so number one your encounter with God that produces a fear of God in you. Number two, a transformed mind. Transformed beyond your cultural limitations. Number three, the discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. Please do not forget this. 
greatness wealth any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system it's not just the issue of the will of god the issue of the will of god as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery it is clear in the word i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day, right? That you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a part you have to play. There is a part that I have to play. Huh? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of thy mouth, it says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then it says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life are we together give me five ten minutes let me talk a little let me take point three a little more write this down please i know that i've taught a lot about finances but let me just talk for five ten minutes on a few things about our financial life number one let me tell you something a job alone will limit you I want to I want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit a job alone will limit you brothers and sisters no matter how much of a job you get no matter how great of a job you get a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment your needs are plenty family needs the average African family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance It's capital intensive to live in Nigeria, to send children to school. Almost all of us here, by the time you are a Christian and you are born again, you have commitments to your church, to your group, to your ministry. And part of it is financial commitment. Part of it, there are several things you have to do that take money from you. You are broke. Let me give us a little financial intelligence. We'll always add this. You are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so it's pinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and i don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession i tell you Are we together? Did you know for instance, did you know for instance, every week we rent chairs in the dozens. During the miracle service, we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens. That's someone's business. Are we together? That's someone's business. Every week, there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire. 
if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it. Just, I mean just koinonia alone. Please activate streams of income. Take responsibility for your life. And don't give people anything substandard. You are, you are insincere and you are ungodly. When you wet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer. Don't be that insincere. Make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough. Then you can open up your hands for value. Don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense. No, don't do that. If you know you cannot work on it, package yourself. Work on yourself. I work on myself every day. I returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as I was. I made sure that my daily goals were met. Please, don't you think that it is just the anointing. The anointing is there. I'm going to talk about it. Paul said, I thank my, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. I prepare an average of two to three sermons every week. It takes time. It takes research. It takes staying in the spirit. There are other aspects of my life I am involved in. What are you doing? There is no laziness. Don't sit down and say, oh God, when will you change my, my situation? Don't sit there and say, who will come and marry me out of this problem? Nobody. At least nobody in Koinonia. And brothers, don't wait and say, which lady? The Bible says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are we together? This is the undoing of Africa. This is the undoing of many people. My neighbors, um, they bought a few months ago, they bought a grinding engine. And the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there, at once they became relevant in that environment. Almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever. They come to them. What is their reward? The transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them a place that was previously very quiet and conservative now you see the people early in the morning the engine is up and they are grinding sometimes till late in the night and they are making money from it please i want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself young and old sit down and say i now see why things are not working in my life i now see why i'm feeling the heat of the recession I am not saying you should be a money monger. Remember, we've done financial dominion. So you cannot sit and say now, which business do I do? Uh -uh. That's a wrong question. How do I develop myself to rise to a point of value? When you are valuable, then now you build a system around that value. That's what we call business. Business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people. Then you receive financial rewards among other things. There's nothing mysterious about business. Building a business is simply having a value, converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful, and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give. Very simple. But it's not as simple as it sounds. The last point. Rise to a point of value. Rise to a point of value. The last point. What is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant? The fourth key to rising beyond recession. We name the series Thrive. To thrive does not mean to manage. The thrive, to thrive means to blossom. Thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out. You see how a plant grows out of the soil. And you see it moving regardless of of the strength of the soil it shoots through it and it blossoms that's what it means to thrive you don't thrive if there are no obstacles you thrive in spite of obstacles the fourth key is an encounter with the anointing ah anointing 
Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. Sing it one more time, everybody. Anointing fall on me. Anointing. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall. I love what I'm about to share with you, I'm telling you. Because it's something that has changed my life. You, you, see, you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, Tim. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Oh, oh. The anointing. Write this down. Let me give you a few definitions about the anointing. Kabratise le karasunda brahatari adabalada. You are amazing, girl. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Write this down. The anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent Him in your territory. The anointing is God's seal of authorization. It's His authorization upon an individual to represent Him. The authorization for legislature. The authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth. The anointing. Number two. The anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3 How terrible art thou in thy ways Through the greatness of thy power Shall thy enemies submit themselves to you To compel compliance Number 3 Now I love this definition The anointing Is an empowerment To manifest the possibilities in God an empowerment to manifest, to reveal, to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here. Experience possibilities. I think the media should do a montage on this. Experience possibilities. It's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe we've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there there are limitless possibilities in God and those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction, the grace of God is at work upon the life of an individual the Bible is a compendium an unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in God 
revealed from generation to generation hallelujah i got a testimony recently and um, i'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so i can share it in the open when we went to yola for the last crusade a few months i think a month or two ago we went to yola one of the person who was driving me around is a doctor phd you know with his wife he's been married and they've, they've been i mean no child this thing has not worked for them and he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed you know it's been a while they've been married they're probably following now and his wife couldn't take in and you know when they were done we're about to leave i asked him i said what would you want the lord to do and then prayed for them and he sent me a text i think it was on our way to bauchi now on our Koki. no no bauchi it was on our way to bauchi i just got a text he said apostle the text is still on my phone he said i called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital and they said i think she's three or a month pregnant say results shout it listen results are evidences that god is alive not just an evidence that a man is anointed it's much more than that it's much more than that it's much more than that during our dinner we'll be playing some videos i hope that the media would consider that i don't know what their plans are but i hope that they should incorporate that and one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations and some of you will marvel and wonder marvel and wonder at the hand of god and what he can do when a man is anointed i've said it and i will say it again and again the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference how can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference it is the very difference when all is said and done the grace that comes upon the life of a man i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something i have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of joshua selman take the anointing out of my life and i'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but is your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and i was listening to some speakers and while they were talking i said my god these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over 
second kings chapter 4 the wife of the son of the prophets went to elisha and elisha said what do i need to do to you what is what is wrong what is the problem and she said you know this and that there is this situation and then he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil and he said that's it he said go and borrow vessels verse 3 go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors he said borrow not a few borrow not a few if you increase capacity every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it if i pour this water on the cover listen if i pour this water on the cover the cover will limit the water this makes this water look as though it is triangular pour it in a plate the plate will become like that thank you are we together the anointing and then when she got it he now told her he said go and close the door when the prophet was talking the anointing is a living thing it was hearing it was hearing the discussion and the moment she did that she began to pour the oil the oil began to multiply listen it's not enough to be anointed you must be anointed at a level that can command notable results it's not enough to be anointed the anointing is like currency the anointing is like currency hundred naira can buy sweet but hundred naira cannot buy shoe but it is still money so don't say i'm anointed the bible says acts chapter 10 right when paul was speaking in the house of cornelius the salvation of the jews in verse 38 he said how god anointed look at the extent to which god anointed jesus so it's not just that jesus was anointed look at the extent how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then the bible says on the strength of that anointing he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god was with him the anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll no those are just effects of the anointing on the human body and then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation but the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking results results i don't care whether you shake like a leaf results brothers and sisters i just want to praise i lift my hands to say i love you you are everything to be and i exalt your Jesus are you the Messiah is it true that the anointing is on you and Jesus said all right watch this the blind eyes open the deaf ears here and he said go back and tell John how do you know a man who is anointed results results don't trivialize results it's not all about the results are you joking what then is it about results lives changed results hallelujah when there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that it's the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets no cs how do you explain that results are we together results a whole family
family almost ravaged with HIV that cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed not just one person it's called results brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth you may be criticized but you will never be ignored once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man upon the life of a business satan will raise criticisms why so that your word will not be heard so that you will not be believed and so that people will not be blessed but here's what the bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth the truth was buried only for three days after three days it came back to life results results notable results not just results it says the spirit of the lord please give us isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy it was a prophecy about jesus christ the spirit of the lord is upon me he says for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free are we together and then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives and all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our god and all of that to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 and then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes that's what the anointing does beauty for ashes the oil of joy for the garment of praise right or oh, I'm, I'm the oil of joy for morning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him is called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the holy spirit your life is transformed your mindset is changed you become a leader you become an ambassador of the kingdom then you are now anointed again to reproduce same. the anointing there is nothing one of our core values as you know in this ministry is the anointing we believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time absolutely so you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band because everything is done with respect to the anointing they believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics they are spirit and life are we together listen please hear me i do not boast to have risen so far compared to where i need to go i am just starting but i can tell you this i have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of god upon the earth and this is what they have done and this is what they do daily the keys are finite the keys are not infinite but every one of them is important for the door to open the keys to your destiny they are not infinite they are not so many but each and every one of them must be there in place it's like a code your passion for god a transformed mind your gifts and your abilities and then the anointing of god upon you no 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 you can't be weak you can't be weak you can't be weak it's my prayer that after this teaching someone will not just hear and say wow this was nice honestly when you see me talk like this i talk from my heart because this is it you know sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is but when someone who has found it says, look, this is what you are looking for. Don't go around and waste your time and come back and say, ah, ah, I didn't know it was like this. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Make sure you talk to him when praying. Holy Spirit, 
Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Please pray, please pray. Those outside, you can come in. Clear the way for them so they can come. I want you to sing the song. It's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait on you. Spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Shabarataya. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. This is my prayer, Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place.
to mean business with your destiny. Ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny. Don't worry about the rain. There are people who will direct you strategically. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Father, I declare that my mindset must change. Lift your voice and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. Hallelujah. Please help me technical. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me. The quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation. Not every information is needed and useful for your destiny. The fact that you are getting information does not mean you are growing. The fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising. The information you are getting must be needed and useful. It must be needed and useful. I like you to pray and say, Lord, the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Ela que te prescata pra te chamar e balada ba. Embrusa seca to sopra te escala maria da balada 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 ba. Raka da bagada bagada balada ba casa pra que da bala. Empreto com to pro com to sopro pra que te leva ba 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 ba. The right knowledge, the right information, the right knowledge, the right information. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's raining, but we're still praying. Hallelujah. 
apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you are in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life that should bless my world? Reveal it, reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord my gift Lord the ability that you have put within me in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost there is an ability, 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 is an ability. within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We are praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. I'm rising beyond recession. I'm rising beyond limitation. There is a gift in me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, They that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtha and Zebulun, he said, They have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says for darkness, confusion shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. He said, but upon you, his glory shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, hallelujah, Gentiles shall come. You will not look for them. Gentiles will come to your light. Gentiles will come. You will not publicize. There is an unction. There is a gift. There is an ability. Gentiles shall come to your light, then their kings to the brightness of your rising. It say your gates shall be continually open. They will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Listen. I want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift, I call them into 
my life lift your voice and pray please be serious everyone in every territory call ordain anointed everyone call to honor your gift your business acumen your intellectual capacity your education your skill everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry call them for by the power of the prophetic by the power of the prophetic I call them, I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command them to appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you what the Bible says. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door will be open. When you knock on that door, it will open, I assure you. i like us to pray. i like you to cry for a fresh anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil, there is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Pray. Upon my marriage, a superior unction, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored. Everyone that asked, receive it. Everyone that asked, receive it. Everyone that asked, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months have been phenomenal seasons of my life. 
stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions testimonies beyond imagination you can pray it through genuine desire a heart that is thirsty thou son of David have mercy on me thou son of David anoint me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me I'll take my life, breathe on me. of Solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee because of the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you We are going to pray I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart you are going to challenge every door of limitation see let me tell you honestly if we are to be truthful with ourselves there are people you are not down but you are not up either you can move up when you are up you know you are there I like you to pray and say I challenge limitations you are a spirit and I speak to you this season you are living lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray I challenge limitation over my life I challenge limitations I challenge limitations Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord upon Koinonia. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priesthood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism, it's influence. The key, and I, if I be lifted up, not if I be talked about, I will draw all men. The capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, every influence destined for me, I decree that the grace for it must come on me. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings, access to nobles, access to kings, 
access to men of influence access to custodians of systems hallelujah hallelujah one of the blessings and the secret that is responsible for the ease in this ministry is unusual access unusual influence God has given us access to politicians access to governmental figures access to kings access to financial people access to mentors access to voices that can advocate access to the credibility of men access to their willingness to let you leverage upon their success i want you to pray again and say lord the access i need to end struggle bring it to my life bring it to my life lift your voice it's not as hard as we make it influence is powerful influence is powerful please i like you to pray lord i desire influence the capacity to rise to a platform where your name can be heard where your glory can be seen hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord listen the body of jesus was hanging on the cross the body would have remained there indefinitely it was not a prayer warrior that demanded the body a man of influence called joseph of arimathea the bible says he was a noble man a man of influence and he used his access are we together to herod to caesar to demand the body of jesus he was a noble man he had influence he had a virgin tomb he had influence and he said look herod i need the body of this man and he said you have it there are things you have been praying for that influence will give you at a platter of gold let her go now you are a wicked spirit out i see you in the spirit go out of her now Go. Now. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Take over. Out. Posha. Come out now. Posha. In the name of Jesus Christ. This serpent and spirit. Your time is over. Go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Some of you are not out here. But there are things that are already parting ways with you. Are you getting my point? I want to rebuke delay. Many of you do not know the danger of delay. If you are not experiencing any delay, no problem. But I'm just flowing as the Spirit of God. Where is your sister? Bring her. Sister, where are you? Please come and stand here. Your breakthrough has come. 
marital delay it will die now at once hold my hands look at me just look at me all right then you will leave her never ever to return to her again by the power of the holy ghost right now i challenge you something will leave you right now i'm seeing you tied in the spirit marital delay go never to return lay your hands on your stomach they will never say you have a fibroid I cause that spirit it's a family thing hold her this is a family thing may they be free oh God bring salvation to this family right now now in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I tell you, the devil hates this prayer. Because if he can get you to experience delay, you will give up on your faith. There are many of you, there are levels you would have entered right now. Bring this lady. Yes, come with her. Just clear the way for them. Let me just touch her head. Well done, ushers. Let her be free. Let her go. Together with the delay. Zigo Palada Garanda Shia Kataga do Siza Lagataga Branda Sila Barando Jigli. Listen, lift your hands, everybody. Outside, lift your hands. I'm about to challenge the spirit of delay. Sakataya Mandeka Sete Lamantaria. You can't move forward because something is tying you down right now. In the name that is above every other name, every delay in this place at the count of three, I command the devils be gone right now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. I cause delay. I cause delay. I cause delay. Every kind of delay. Every kind of delay. Where is the woman? I, where is the woman I spoke about? One mama that was here. How are you, madam? You, you came alone? Where are they? Come, come. Who are those that came with mommy? Bring this woman here. Sorry, just take it easy so they don't. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Where's the daughter? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God is going to visit you. This is witchcraft. Eh? Madam, this is witchcraft. I'm not going to go into any long story, but I need to pray for you. You believe that? This is your daughter? Yes, sir. How are you, my dear? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands. I'm seeing you tied. Kai, this is... This is acute witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Edo. Edo State. Yes, sir. Hold my hands. And I always find my spirit in the village. Ah, uh -uh, now hold on. Why are you? I want to. It's just that I didn't want to talk to you. See, let me tell you something. Huh? 
the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine. Are you listening to me? I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine in your village. When you sleep in the night, they call your spirit. Is that true? Yes, sir. Just if I'm lying, just yes, say I'm sir. lying. Yes, sir. When you sleep, where do you see yourself? I when find myself in the village. You find yourself in the village. Yes. This is what I'm seeing. They are invoking her spirit. This is what that, that witch doctor tried to do to the spirit of Saul. You see that in the Bible. These people are necromancers. You will be free tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I pray for you? He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Like Madam, look at me. In the darkness. Can you shout? If I ask you to shout, can you shout? I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Can you do that? Go ahead. Let her go now. Let her go now. Out. An end comes. I command breakthrough. Let this family change. Don't cry. Can I pray for you? Father, let this lady experience breakthrough. This is part of it. Eh? Is you are the one that brought her. Celebrate this lady, please. You see why it's a blessing, madam. You feel pain at, used to feel pain at your back. Eh? You came here sick. Look at you came here sick now. Come and walk. Let me see where the sickness is now. Don't worry. Come up. Just come up. Check yourself. Check. Do what you couldn't do. Check whether the pain is there. Do what you couldn't do. Just do. Check. I was already healed. Yeah. You were what? I was already healed. You were already healed. They have been calling me to come for this program. I couldn't come. Even when I was in the shop, my daughter said, Mommy, come. I kept a seat for you. When you enter, the Holy Spirit said, That is the man that will deliver you. I gave my life to Christ 20 years ago. But there's battle. I always complain. Why am I seeing my spirit in the village? And anything we touch with my husband, there's nothing. I went to, even when you are preaching, you say some people will go to some me church to go and receive miracle. I went to, the last one I went to, I weep. I gave money, I cooked to this woman. He says it's a prophet. You cook for the prophetess? Who cook? And after I left the place, after I left the place, he just damaged my image, was just saying different things about me. And I'm not like that. And God did it for me today. I'm the king. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. You are the one that brought her. Are you her daughter? No, she's my neighbor. She's your neighbor. What do you want God to do for you? I just want to get admission. That's all. Admission? Yes. Where? Into a university. Have you written jam? No, no. You are writing next week. Yes. Hold my hands. My God. In the name that is above all names. We give you admission in this place now. The God who is bigger than any registrar, bigger than any senate, you will come back and stand right here and testify. You have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, no power will stop you. I use this as a point of contact to everyone who is going to be writing jam whether for you or for your loved ones i tell you the truth and i lie not see listen prophecy every power that says you will not be admitted in the name that is above all names. Receive, your admission. receive your admission receive your admission receive your admission receive your admission I provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost receive your admission 
Where, listen, whether you know what you are writing or not, may my God hold your hands. That oh, hand, that Lord, oh, 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 Nene, Nene, who says it, if I be a servant of God, may my God hold your hand. Listen, many of you do not know the power of prophecy. Prophecy is not just about speaking. It creates the scene for your breakthrough to happen. Zigo paradia sa granda bali ke ti super lotika da. Le koto paradia sa ganda re ya ta gada ba ya. Parada shi ama grundi siza ma paradia ta. Zigo shila. Give me her hands. She was coming to fight me now. Shila. All right, you must leave. No, don't put it in. Hold on. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Out! You are a wicked spirit. By the power of the blood. Go now! Don't waste our time here. Now! Thank you, Jesus. Be thou and throne. On high and throne, on high and throne. Help me worship us. Be thou and throne. Marriage. We are going to visit the issue of marriage right now. Please, I want you to listen. I'm just flowing as the Holy Ghost is giving me grace. Sister, look at me. Just look at my eyes. You must release her right now. It's time for you to go. Out you go. Now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I set you free. Let it leave you now. Let it leave you now. Whether it's for yourself or for your loved ones, I want you to stand and agree right now. I'm about to command that spirit that causes late marriage. Please take it very serious. This is a miracle service. Don't say it doesn't concern you. And all I want you to do is just to shout amen. All the spirits that come to molest you and molest your loved ones and cause them not to get married. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that name that is above every other name in the name that is above all names I pray right now by the power of the Holy Ghost please get said something mighty will happen in this place now every spirit that says there will not be marriage by the sword of Elohim right now as you shout Jesus they will depart from you now one two go every marital delay go 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 let marriage spirit us back out in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you may your life partner come into your life I prophesy I call for your life partner supernatural marriage hallelujah hallelujah a lady has been healed of chest condition outside check yourself and run out here check it looks like ulcer you just feel something leave you please check and run quickly quickly come and let God seal your miracle the Lord just minister to me please check check hallelujah I'm about to pray for the sick right now every infirmity bows to the name of Jesus God has killed a lady a lady is that the lady another one come come you've been healed when God speaks to one he speaks to many look at just one prophetic word give them the mic is it working what happened to you just tell us quickly okay, I just felt a pain leave my chest. you felt something leave you yeah. do what you couldn't do before I felt pain in my chest. completely hold my hands never returns in the name of Jesus Christ let her go forever come what happened to you now I have been having this burning pain here. You've been having burning I pain. How long? For I've how long? I've been on drugs for over two weeks now. You've been on drugs? Yes. Uh -huh. The drugs is even, in, is even in my bag right now. The drugs is, go and bring yes. it. Talk to her. What happened? Please tell us. A sharp pain left me. A sharp pain right now just disappeared. Come on. Are you celebrating Jesus? Look at the drugs. These are the drugs you take. In the name that is above all names, hold the drugs. Just hold it. Hold it. Look at me. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are perfecting her. She will not need these drugs again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Check yourself. God is healing more people with this kind of pain. If it's happening to you, come out right now. Come out. God is healing people. Ulcers. Ulcers are going right now. Okay, she's been healed. God bless you. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Talk to me. I've been having this pain of chest. Please make sure you don't tell lies. For the past two years now. For the I've past been, two years now. I've been two years. This chest pain. Chest pain. Yes, sir. Anytime okay. Anytime I try to breathe, it will hold. It will. When you try me. to breathe, it will hold it you. To hook me. Uh huh. Sometimes I'll be crying, praying. My mom said that it is over, but I've been going to hospital to collect drugs. But I told my mom I couldn't, I can't take any drugs again. But I believe that God will heal me one day, one time. What happened right now? When you said that we should check, and when you prayed, I felt that I felt that something is out of me, and now I'm healed. Breathe, do breathe in deep. Any pain? No, Any sir. pain? No. Sir. Just keep breathing. The power of God is coming on you. Lord, let that be the end of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Perfection in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, all right? I've been having this chest pain for over two years and six months. Two years, six months. Six months. Yes. Pain. If I breathe in, it just pain. Okay, breathe in now. Breathe in right now. What happened to you right now? It's free. Complete pain. Hold my hands. Lord, it never returns to him again in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Since 2006. Yes, and recently. Peptic ulcer. Yes. You are sure, confirmed. Yes. Okay. And last week the thing started coming back again, and the pain was so severe. At times it doesn't allow me to sleep at night. But as we we're outside and we shouted Jesus, I felt. You felt something. Yes. That so wicked said, thing that has sat there. He must pack his load and leave this night. I felt Hold my hand. I use this as a point of contact to every area of your body. That whatever has not been planted by my God lives your life forever. If you have problem in your eyes, God is going to heal all kinds of eye problems right now. Lay your hands there, please. I want to pray. Lay your hands. Please believe. Thank you, Jesus. When I pray for you, check yourself. And if you see a miracle, run out here. Even if you see that it has started, please don't tell lies. We are not playing gimmicks here. Some of you think it's an eye problem. But it's a demonic thing. I'm about to command it to leave you. Thank you, Jesus. Even itching in the eyes will leave. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I command. Eyes be healed. Be healed. Now, be healed. Be healed. Every blind eye open. Every blind eye open. Partial blindness be gone. In the name of Jesus, long-sightedness, short-sightedness, glaucoma, every eye condition, be healed now. Please be checking yourselves. Check yourselves. God is doing miracles now. Check yourself. If you have any growth in your body, please check yourself. As you see God touching you, come out. You, I tell you, God is healing people. If there is any growth, in any part of your body what's wrong with him eye problem bring him god is healing people look at look at a miracle look at a big miracle look at look at this look at this look at what is happening to these people look at eyes are opening come on give jesus praise eyes are opening receive your miracle receive your miracle every kind of eye condition Hallelujah. We'll take the testimony. Check yourself. Don't let the devil stop you. What's, his, what's the problem with him? Look at this. He can't. Eh? Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. There's no time for that. What is wrong with him? This. I can see. Completely. Yes. Who brought him here? His mom. We came together. With him. Mama? Okay, I'm going to pray for him. As I pray for him, keep testing him. When he can see you, just try him out. The Lord will heal him. Lay your hands on your... No, no, let, let him lay his hands on your eyes. Lay your hands by yourself on your eyes. I command new eyes by the power of the Christ. How long has this been? Does she speak English? One year, two months. One year, two months. Yeah. What happened to him? Uh, it was glaucoma. It's glaucoma. So we went to the hospital and the doctor told me that he could cure me, that she go meet any man of God to heal me. That he cannot help you. Yeah, so I'm from Zankwa in Zankwa, local government. So I had you, this You came program. all the way from Zankwa? Yes, sir. Oh my God. Jesus, heal these eyes. Glaucoma, I command you to be gone. Bow to the name of Jesus bow to the name of Jesus I command his eyes to open right now open right now please check him test him see, test him test him just test him if you've seen anything can you say don't be afraid this is a factory just test him sister stand up what is the eh? saw you saw light what are you seeing oh my god look at how this guy's eyes is so damaged huh can you see anything? I can't see. Look the at the only thing I saw was the light I saw and it went. You saw off. light? Yeah, when you just finished praying. So I just opened my eye, then it went off again. Okay, just keep looking at me. Please don't give up. Alright? Get him a seat. Just keep looking at me. What happened to you? 
I saw a sharp light in my eyes. You saw a sharp light. You see the same light again. Yes, a sharp light. You've been using glasses. I've been using glasses over two and a half Who knows years her? Now. Who knows her? Ah, okay. You all. Know. Who is your roommate? Roommate, where are you? Come now, roommate. When we say roommate, where are you? You come out. You know her, so that you don't come out. You see, you know why we are doing this? Because of the stupidity around the body of Christ. Some people now can think that this is stage managed. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why we are calling the roommate. Do you know me? Eh? No, what I mean is, do I have a personal relationship with you? What happened now? Tell us the truth. I saw a sharp light in you my eyes. A sharp and I, light. I, I, I fell down. And then you fell under yes. the anointing. For, for two and a half years, I can't concentrate for long. I can't read for more than one hour. Tears will just start falling off my eyes. Each until year. you use glasses. Yes, until Give I us use something glasses. to read. Something tiny. Bible. Where are all those small, small Bibles? Read Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. I'm holding your glasses. Arise and shine. For the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Come on, give Jesus praise. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Who brought yes, this boy? Okay. Uh, How are you? Father. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Let's hear the boy. Who brought him? I come alone. Alone? Yes, okay. Sir. He's old enough to respond now for himself. Is that true? Okay. What happened to you? As Please was, make sure we verify this. As I was praying from outside. Okay. Something entered me. So as, as I fell down and I'm coming. Now I, I, I can't feel anything again. You then can't later, somebody hold me. Before I know something started began working on my stomach. Something started working in your stomach. Yes, How sir. do you feel now? Was he blind? What was wrong? I Please feel check. better. You feel better. Yes, you were sir. sick. What was wrong with you? I was having stomach ache. Stomach ache. Yes, sir. Lay your hands. It must be perfected right now. Lay, hold me with one hand. You will see something moving and that will be the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Who brought this small boy? I brought my son. You brought him? Eh? I brought my You brought yourself? Ha! Uh, Could you speak English when you were his age? What's your name? My name is Victor. Your name is what? Victor. Victor. <laughs> you mean they allow little children to come on their own like this? He's, he lives around or he took transport? No, I came with my parents. Oh, you came with your parents? Yes. Oh, beautiful. What was wrong with you? My eyes was itching me. Your eyes used to itch you? Yes. And then what happened? But now I can't feel it again. You can't feel it again? <laughs> to the shame of the devil. Father, let this be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Who else? Who else? Please. Only eye conditions. Okay. First God, I had these itchy eyes and it's always bringing out tears. The doctor recommended glasses, but I didn't go back to the doctor because okay. I didn't want to use them. But there, something hit my stomach and my eyes. Where? When I was standing over when there. When you were standing there. Who saw her? Is that true? Okay. Yes, sir. So I... And yes, it's gone. Yes. Praise the Lord to the shame of the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is perfected never to return again. From the beginning of this month, I've been having this. I don't know, every time I read, I skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know why. And it started from January. You what? I skip the word. Like when I start reading, I just skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know what happens to me what and today like yeah or something? today i was in class and my i was we were reading my friend was not asking me what's wrong with me i'm reading the word i'm mixing the word i'm like it started since this year and she's like okay i need glasses i'm like i don't need glasses oh when you are reading yes the, you will be skipping yes, the I'll, words I'll, skip the word, I'll go blank and i don't know why what happened to you now when we we're praying i laid my hands on my and my hands on my eye and then a light just just hit me and my hands touched Light again. You see the light? my eyes got very hot. And then Your I eyes got open. hot. Yes. And you felt it open. open. To the shame of the devil, it will never come back again. 
read Isaiah 51, just verse 1 and 2. Let's see. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hanged, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I call him alone, and, and blessed, I blessed him, and, blessed him, and, I and increased, increased him. him. God bless you. It never returns in Jesus' name. You too. Yeah. Come. It, okay. It started in 2011. Um, I was having a pain in my eyes and an itch. So it's, I feel like um, each time it comes, I feel heaviness in my eyes. You feel heaviness so in your eyes. So when I went to Chica, they told me it's pterygium. That is it's mostly pterygium. That is, I'm not supposed to survive. It. That is some, it's prominent among um, old people. So and when I went, they prescribed some medications for me. I went... I went time what happened right now? So, but while the prayer was going on, I felt that heaviness was relieved from my eyes. It completely. Yeah. You feel any pain now? No. It's gone completely. Yeah. May it be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Sweetheart, how are you? Yeah. What's your name? Mercy. We have brilliant children in Koinonia. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us smart children. You came on your own? My sister brought you. Oh, your sister brought you. What was wrong with you? Your eye used to eat you. Is he eating you now? What happened? When, when I was praying, I put my eyes. You played your hand on your eyes. Uh huh. I, I saw that the thing has gone. Completely. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may it never return. In Jesus' name. All right, the last person. Okay. Sir, so my eyes sometimes just to pain me. So, uh, me and my mother we went to sick bay. They said that I needed classes. Okay. But since that day, my mother and I never went. So sometimes I'll, my eye will, will be itching me. I was okay. like start, start feeling sleepy. But now it has gone. But now it has gone completely. Thank you, Jesus. May it never return again in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, while the worship team just leads us in a powerful session of worship, I want you to line up all the sick people, especially... If you came here from outside Zaria, please, let's give you priority. Just come out quickly and then the rest join them. Please, you came with a sick person. Now is the time to he to, to, uh, to, for them to receive their healing. Very, very quickly. Please, we have a lot to do. Time is not on our side. Very quickly. Very quickly. Worship team, please help us. Hallelujah. Please bring them out quickly. Line them up very quickly please help them protocol ushers direct them please let's save time inside and outside if you are sick whether you are outside zaria or not just come please come out now is the time for you to be healed thank you jesus for your healing power those of us who are seated begin to pray in tongues please My don't be distracted he can move that mountain of sickness will be moved right now whatever it is please keep coming quickly come and line, line yourself as you come just be praying and say lord this is it i am parting with this sickness From the rain, say, My God, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened, forever He will reign. My God is awesome, my God is awesome.
I pray for you, just begin to check yourself. Begin to check yourself. Let's pace them very quickly. Hallelujah. As I pray for you, please, I want you to believe. I already sense the healing anointing very strong on my hands. And as I pray for you, you'll be healed. You will be delivered no matter what it is please don't go back the same you don't have to go back the same you do not have to go back the same no matter what the issue is i want you to know that you are parting with this sickness right now thank you jesus lord i give you praise in the name of jesus christ
him. He has what? What's the wait? Hold on. What's the issue? Yes, with my bike. And the leg broke. Wait! You don't try to lift him. This guy had an accident. Look just, at me. Since I, when? I think a week ago now. You can't walk. The the nurse bandaged my leg. So then what happened? I started. I couldn't walk very well again, so I removed the bandage. Why did you remove the bandage? Because pulse was going out. Pulse was going out of the leg. Yes. Where is it? Ah, oh, goodness! Look at this. Look at me, brother. Yes, sir. Look at me. He's paining you now. Look at me. Just stretch the leg. Look at me. It's a demon. This is not accident. Thank you, Jesus. Look at everybody is seeing it. I'm happy you're seeing it. Show them, please. Put it on the screen. Now let this leg be healed right now. Right now. In the name of the Christ. Can you see the guy has suddenly become relaxed? This is somebody that could not sit down. Something affected the bone in the accident. I joined this bone back. Now, who is a witness that he really had the accident? Who knows? You saw him limping when he came. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something is happening to you. Thank you, Jesus. I fix this leg right now. Within days, this thing will dry up. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Walk. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Come, come, walk. Do what you couldn't do. Just do what you couldn't do. Don't, don't, just do what you couldn't do. See, he's surprised. He's shocked looking at his leg. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Look at, look at this. Look at what, hold on. See, the guy, what is happening to you? The leg is drying up. The leg is drying up. Drying up. You are feeling it now. Yes. Everybody clear the way for him. Rush, go and come back. Walk, go and come back. Go down there and come back. Look at this guy could not walk. He had an accident with this leg. Come, walk as fast as you can. Walk as fast as you can. Look at the boy is crying. Look at this. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. No man can do these things except God be with him. This is not for the glory of any man. Lord, we give you praise for that which you are doing in our midst. This leg dries up in the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Zim. Keep me in the fire.
my God is awesome. He is He's awesome. Of them, the right. you've never been able to use it mm, except with age, except it's an age. Try to move it, I can move it. Just where is which one? Which of them? Try to move it. Yeah? Just do what I'm telling you to do. Try to stamp it. Without this, eh? not far, but can you walk without this? Shortly, very short. Mm. Can you try right now? Sure, do you think you can? Hold my hands, let's try. Stand up, look at me. If anybody supports you, if someone supports you, will you be able to walk? If nobody supports you, can you walk? You will fall. Yes. Okay, let's see. Try to walk. Come.
Lost Brothers. Hold my hands. That devil of diabetes. It's time for you to leave now. Hypertension. You are a spirit. I command you out of her life and out of her family. Mommy, be healed now. Now. Take off everything you have put in her stomach and out you go now. Now! Did you bring your prayer requests? Please start passing them quickly. Look at me. God is healing you right now. The power of God is going through your hands. You're being healed right now. Pass your last, pass the request to the last person at the side. Outside, please do the same thing. Let's save time. Everything you have written on this request will be answered in the name of Jesus. Please pass it, pass it quickly. Liver. Lord, she's totally free. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for Just quickly, quickly, quickly. If you don't have your request, write you one quickly. You are the joy of the whole world. You are the great and mighty God. Yeah. Whole world. You are the great and mighty God. 
Is anyone attending to those outside? Those outside, please. Let's have their request. I hope there's a way of getting the ones on, fa on Facebook and all of that. If we can't, we can just reach out to them by faith. Please make sure that you have a prayer request. God answers prayers here. Yeah. Please, everybody, rise if you can. Please, this is a very prophetic moment. Please, we'll start praying. The rest can come and join us. The other one. Pastor, please. Praise God. Listen. Please understand that this is not a religion that is done every miracle Sunday. This is done on instruction and this is biblical. The Bible says when Ezekiah was threatened, he took the threat letter before God on the altar and dropped it there. Are you getting my point? These requests have threatened the lives and the families of many of us. That's why we are bringing it before God and we are saying, Lord, if you do not step in, nothing can be done. But I want you to know that within the next five minutes or thereabout, as we begin to prophesy and lay hands on this, the angel of the Lord's presence will go to different families, different places and begin to work miracles. Hallelujah. So all you're going to do is just stretch your hands here and be praying in tongues while the worship team leads us in worship. Just keep worshiping as they pray in tongues. Is that okay? Please go ahead. Shekata ba 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 ba. You do wonders in me. Shekata ba 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 kata ba. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come. My God, in the name of Jesus, we trust you. Stretch your hands, O oh God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O oh God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O oh God, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands, O oh God. Lord, let impossible miracles happen. We bring this before the altar. That which threatens the Christian experience of your people. My God, I pray that every request here be turned into testimonies. Let there be deliverances, O God. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
Sara praki jali mazata la broki jili bana zata ya. Rika lu jali kra zata ta pata shitaba. The God of all flesh jara pakata shilia. Le zari ka pata sha we declare. La zata pata sha. The one that parted the Red Sea. Raka pata shitaba. Ribi zuri brani ne kocho shitaba. Do the impossible right now. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. You break upon the rings and you part it into two. Do the impossible right now. Behold the request of your people. Behold their heart desires. Let there, let there be miracles now. Intervene now. Intervene now. Intervene now. In the name of Jesus. We declare way where there seems to be no way right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, and as, as a result of an intervention, let there be influx of testimonies. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That which was impossible with men, oh God, will they will declare. That with this request, oh God, let, the, let there be possibility right now. In the name of Jesus. Miracles. Miracles. Open doors. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for your great intervention. Thank you, mighty God, for the great turnaround. Bless the name forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. We command that these requests be turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus, let there be mighty miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, stand. Everywhere, please stand. I'm about to prophesy into our lives. Lay your hand on our chest. Out now. release her and go now hallelujah and he said to me prophesy and I prophesied as I was commanded not as I wanted I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound a rattling sound and bones began to be joined to bones and he said unto me son of man prophesy to the four winds and i prophesied O wind breathe upon the slain and the wind came and breathed upon the slain and there stood an exceeding great army i want to prophesy over your life I want you to shout amen at the top of your voice. Please believe it. Prophecy is creative. Hallelujah. Please play strings. Thank you, Father, because you always hear me when I call. Lord, as I prophesy over your people, let it not be a ritual, I pray. Nothing will happen if your power does not make it happen. Therefore, I pray that the angels that confirm the words of his messengers, may they back this word and bring it to pass. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God. Hallelujah. 
and Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth and the prophet said in Samaria by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow the Bible says believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established he said believe in his prophets and you shall prosper by a prophet he brought them out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved he says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward do the impossible do the impossible i'm not singing just concentrate my god would you step in and do the impossible do the impossible change the unchangeable change the unchangeable my God step in to the impossible to the impossible please lift your hands In the name that is above all names the name that causes demons to tremble the name that causes breakthrough and deliverance I command right now let there be supernatural restoration for everything that you have lost restoration now restoration now restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost receive restoration everything you have lost for whatever reason it was lost I command restoration of opportunities in the name of Jesus restoration of destiny help us restoration of the years that the canker worm has eaten now hallelujah every handwriting against your destiny that has said 2014 will be a year of frustration in the name that is above all names be cancelled now. 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 Cancel now. In the book of Job, he says. In six things will he deliver you, yea, in seven things. And one of them is the scourging tongues of men. When men sit down and make enchantments in the name of the God that I serve, every cause, every pronouncement over your life, because now, because now, because now because now then the brother shall acabar on satan for he has broken the gates of brass and he has caught the irons 
in sunder. My God, I pray. Every door that has been closed over your people. In the name that is above all names. If God be in this place. I command those two leaf gates. Be open now. Be open now. I prophesy be open now. By the power of prophecy. Be open now. Everyone called jobless in this place. In the name that is above every other name. Satele kabande kretisaka. Ashetete balakata bregede balada bagada baga. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they brought Mephibosheth, a man who was not qualified, but the favor of God made him to sit at table with David. I pray by the favor of God, wherever you need favor for jobs, I prophesy, receive it now. Receive it now from the north to the south to the east, to the west, I command jobs. Every man that has said over his dead body for you to move forward, may his prophecy come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to break that power that limits men every limitation every embargo that has been placed over your life that is said thus far have you come i speak from the heavens in the name of jesus limitations be lifted now be lifted now be lifted now i command break records Break records, set new records, do what has not been done. I pray for everyone whose family member is overdue to be promoted. The Bible says, Withhold not good from who, him who is due when it is within your power to do so, it is within their power to bring the promotion. Therefore, I pray in the name that is above all names, we enforce that promotion now. We enforce it now. Everything that has died in your life, hear ye the word of the Lord. Come alive now. Dead relationships come alive now. I pray for your academics. For he has given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak the word in due season to him that is weary. He said, my tongue is the pen of the, right, the ready writer. My heart has indicted a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. Daniel was made 10 times better. He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say. That when you stand before them, you shall not think of what to say. For in that very hour, it will be the spirit of your father speaking. I pray, everyone called doll. I change that testimony now. Everyone on probation, we take you out of it now. We take you out of it now. Everyone on probation, we take you out of it now. Every missing script, every injustice done to everyone, I command the angel of the Lord to go to every department, every faculty. Let justice be done in the name of Jesus
and everyone that has vowed that you will not graduate in the name that is above all names we graduate you right here we graduate you right here in the name of jesus christ we graduate you right here that cause of hardship that is upon our families they walk like elephants and eat like ants tonight in the name that is above all names let that cause of hardship be lifted let it be lifted i speak to every job here receive increase i speak to every business here grow i command you to grow i speak to every ministry expand and break levels in the name of jesus christ let the favor of god that can mark you and distinguish you among your peers i prophesy may that mantle of favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus christ may that favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus may that favor hit you where you are may that favor change you may it cause men to bless you hallelujah and i pray may the presence of god go with you everywhere you go everyone struggling with any habit here that is not of god pornography masturbation whatever it is it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ Every dead spiritual life. Every dead prayer life. Every dead word study life. In the name that is above all names. Come alive now. Receive the fire for prayer. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. The fire for prayer. Take it. The spirit of prayer and supplication. Take it. Let it come upon you like a tornado in the name of Jesus. Grace to pray. Grace to study. Grace to understand. Hallelujah every hidden gift every hidden talent every ability that can bless you that has refused to arise i pray the bible says the gift of a man makes room i pray every hidden gift that the devil has buried i prophesy let it come alive and bless you now let it come alive and bless you now. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head when I cry for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. One more time. Thank you for lifting. 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 My head. My head. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, I'm tired of my life. 
I'm tired of living my life the way I want. I need to surrender my life to a God that is higher and greater than me. Some of you have probably given your heart to the Lord. Please listen. But tonight Jesus is calling. You may have a Christian name. That's not the same as salvation. You may even be a pastor. That's not the same as salvation. Tonight the Lord is calling many of you who have been living your lives your own way to relinquish that hold and surrender it completely. I'm going to make an altar call. Just one to five. I want you to run from outside, from inside. Please run like your life depends on it. You are saying, Lord, I am tired. Take it. Take it. It is yours and I'm giving it back to you. I am tired of living life my own way. I have done my best. I relinquish that whole one. Please rush quickly. Celebrate them as they come. Two. Uh -huh. Just come and as you stand here, just begin to pray. And say, Lord, take over. Take over. That's the song. God bless you. You are saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been living my life the way I want. But tonight, I'm in business with you. Four. Please don't let anybody stop you from coming. Don't let the devil say you are too far. Start running from there. Young and old. Join us. If you are coming, please keep running. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let your friend or your family members stop you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you for all those coming. Thank you for that bold step. Don't let your friends stop you. Thank you. Our mother is coming. God bless you. God bless you. No matter how old, no matter how young, Jesus is calling you tonight. God is still speaking to you. You are saying, Jesus, take everything. Take over. I'm tired of living my life my own way. To you with holding nothing, with holding nothing. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you for coming. Don't make this an emotional decision, mean it from the depths of your heart. No matter what you have done wrong, no matter how you've lived your life, I want you to know that there is a fountain that flows from Emmanuel's veins. And that fountain flows to bless you. It flows to wash you. It flows to cleanse you. Lift your right hand and say this from the depths of your heart. Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is between you and the Lord Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come before you. Unable to help myself. I ask you to help me cleanse me wash me with your precious blood I truly repent of my sins in the name of Jesus I receive eternal life into my spirit from today no backsliding some of you as you are praying this I tell you the power of the devil will be broken all of the chains you are going to say Satan I denounce you right now take your hands and live my life i declare that i'm saved i'm a child of god the lord will use me to do mighty things for his glory i cut away from wrong associations and everything that takes your place in my life from today i'm sold out and totally surrendered now keep your hands lifted father bless these ones you have brought them use them mightily let the power of sin be broken in their lives let the power of the grave be broken let the power of the flesh be broken anoint them and use them mightily oh god let this not be a, an emotional decision let this be a genuine decision in the name of jesus make mighty men out of them in the name of Jesus Christ congratulations I want you to look at me 
I congratulate you for this great decision. Everyone here made this decision at one point. Now I'd like you to just follow our ushers. There's a wonderful sister waving her hand. I want you to just follow them. They'll have, they'll give you some information and they'll meet with you tomorrow. God bless you. Please follow them. Follow them very quickly, please. All those worshiping with us for the first time, if this is your first time here at Koinonia, we love you. Please leave your seat and run out here quickly and let us pray and speak a word of blessing. God bless you. If this is your first time, wherever you are, just run and come. There is a special blessing for you. Don't wait for your neighbor. You are the first person. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Thank you. Thank you for coming. We celebrate you, we honor you, we thank you. Keep coming, don't stop. We have a prayer for you and we have a blessing. And all those who took the pain to invite anybody here, may God invite all the blessings you need in your life. I'm very serious, I'm not just saying it. If anyone came here as a result of your invitation, I pray that my God will invite every good thing and every good person into your life in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. This is Koinonia. We love you. We bless you. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy upon their lives, Koinonia. Bless them. We speak the blessings of the heavens upon your life. We bless you with the blessings of the house. We bless you with prosperity. We bless you with hunger for the things of the spirit. We bless you with wisdom and revelation and understanding. We bless you with grace. We bless you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May you experience the life of God in a new dimension. May God plant a hunger for spiritual things in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for coming. We love you. We're always here Fridays. And I assure you that your life will never be the same. Please, you follow the ushers. They will have your details. They will welcome you more on our behalf. And you will be back to your seat. God bless you. Thank you very much. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Thank you for coming. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye